Hi, I'm Jason with Lake Tahoe Custom Campers, and today we're going to be turning all of this into this. A compact unit containing an easy-to-use bus bar with fuses, a battery shutoff switch, and a smart shunt. Before we dive into this, I'm going to give you a brief overview on what it is and how it works. This is an all-in-one unit that's going to measure the battery current, be able to turn the unit on and off, as well as a nice organized distribution center for your cables. Here we have the on-off switch. This is basically going to connect and disconnect the battery from the system. We have the shunt. This is going to measure current going to and from the battery. And here's the Lynx distributor. This is going to house four fuses, as well as have four indicator lights to show you whether or not the fuses are blown without having to open it up and test the fuses individually. Things we're going to need to complete this project include an M10 Lynx distributor, a Victron Smart Shunt, a battery disconnect switch sized appropriately. We're using a Spartan 300 amp continuous. The included RJ10 cable as well as the power cable for the shunt. A 12 volt to 5 volt converter. Two small ring terminals. An M10 by 20 brass bolt. A 3 8 washer, lock washer, and nut. A small piece of 16 inch gauge wire. Electrical solder and some heat shrink. So because we're using the M10 distributor, this is gonna make this job really simple. We're gonna remove the bolt from the shunt here and replace the M10-15 M1015 with the M1020. Lock washer, followed up by the washer. Take this, put it into the Lynx distributor. Snug that up using the 17 millimeter. And it's nice to put it down like this because it'll give you easy access to all your ports over here. With the battery disconnect, we're just going to remove the back. Again, remove this nut here. And I believe this is a 916. Slide that onto here. Because I'm doing this on the bench top, I'm going to use this SAE plug as our power source, which we're going to add to the other side of the battery disconnect here. I'm going to snug that up. And then we're going to add, essentially, which this is this wire, we just cut it down, added a new ring terminal, and soldered this end back together. And the reason we're doing that is just so we didn't have all this wire bunched up. But There'd be no harm in just adding this here rather than this piece. So we're gonna do that, follow that up with the 3 8 washer, 3 8 lock nut. Tighten that down with the 9 16 into our battery, I'm sorry, voltage battery on the shunt. And that should go in and shouldn't come out. It should be pretty snug in there. You can kind of give it a little test. So that's that. Now we're gonna put this on the other side of the shunt. Both this positive and negative are just temporarily on here for testing. Once introduced into the system, the positive will run to the battery be fused at the battery and the negative will run directly to the battery. I'm going to orientate this correctly so it's going to be like this. I'm going to actually remove this piece here. This is going to enable us to um, put this back on the case. If you're watching this video you're probably aware that these lights here which are indicators of the fuses being blown will not work unless you have either the Lynx PMS or the Lynx um, shunt. So in order to get this to work, we're going to first remove the cover and then we're going to make this cable here, except the positive and negative off of the bus bars to make those lights work. The first thing we're going to do is actually cut this wire, strip back the sheathing, revealing the four wires that are inside. Of those four wires, you're only going to use the black and the yellow wire 
So tuck those away and cut the two remaining wires off. Take your 12 volt to 5 volt converter and cut off the smaller side. This side is the 5 volt portion of it, so you want to be sure not to cut them both at the same time, just not to get them confused. Now we're going to take our heat shrink and we're going to place it one piece over the black wire and one piece over the yellow wire. We're going to take that section and we're going to connect the red wire to the yellow wire by just simply twisting them together. As well as doing that same exact thing to the black wires. By using a soldering iron and some solder, we're going to bond these two wires together. Melt a small portion of solder on the tip of the iron and run the wire through it until it wicks up the solder. You may need to add some more solder as you go. Once both sets of wires are soldered together, bend the soldered end over and slide the heat shrink over the exposed wire. Careful not to damage the wire, use a heat gun to shrink the heat shrinking over the exposed wires. Now cut the opposite end off of the 12 to 5 volt adapter. And we're going to once again strip these wires down using our wire strippers. Black wire, we're going to put a piece of heat shrink, follow it up with a terminal ring, and we're going to go ahead and crimp that ring down and shrink the heat shrink tubing onto the terminal ring. For the red wire, we're going to put on another small piece of heat shrink, slide that back as far as you can, and then we're just going to be adding a little piece of an extension wire here. So twist these up, a little bit of solder. Slide the heat shrink back over the exposed wires and apply some heat. On the other end of that extension wire, we're going to add another ring terminal. After adding some more heat shrink tubing, the finished harness should look like this. With the cover off the Lynx distributor, we're going to route this wire up and underneath here. And we're going to plug this side in to the port that's on the left side. Here, hopefully. Remove this screw here on your ground bus bar. Flip the screw through the ring terminal attached to the black wire and screw it back in. And then we're also going to remove this one on the positive bus bar. Insert the screw into the ring terminal attached to the red wire and screw it back into the positive bus bar. Alright, so now that we have our wires connected to the bus bars as well as to the port here, we're going to go ahead and connect this to our 12 volt source and turn it on. Your LEDs cycle through everything, showing all red. This is indicating that there's no fuses here or the fuses are blown. Everything on here appears to be working as it should, so we're going to go ahead and install the cover. That should cover making the lights functional on the Lynx distributor, as well as adding an affordable shunt and a battery cutoff. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments section. If you found this video helpful or enjoyed it, please give us a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.